This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Norval. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for sharing your Tuesday lunch hour with me. Um, as Norval said, I am Stacy Carr, and I work at Virginia Commonwealth University. And um, one of the most exciting things that I get to do is um, work with young adults in the workforce. Um, a lot of folks with autism who are on the spectrum who are employed. Um, some of their big challenges are keeping employment. And one of the things that really impacts that is social engagement. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So one thing that um, we may all do or not do or choose not to do, including myself, is make small talk. And small talk is that polite conversation, and it's usually about unimportant, kind of trivial, Un un uncontroversial, very important to mention that, um, matters such as things like social occasions or movies, maybe music, music. sports, um, those sorts of things that really won't, really won't trigger any sort of emotional uh, response in folks. So this is hard for most people. And if you think about your own life, you may find it challenging as well. Um, one of the things that I like to do is get into work very, very early. <laughs> so I get into work far before anyone else does. So I can have about an hour to two where there's nobody else here, where I don't have to think about making small talk, where I could actually just get all my work done, or at least get a good start on it before folks who do like to have small talk come in and um, come into my office. <laughs> so this is a, a little cartoon, the awkward Yeti, uh, talking about how to make small talk with an introvert. And a lot of times you know a person's an introvert because when you walk past them, they divert their eyes. Um, they don't particularly like to chit chat with other people. They usually stay in their office. Um, and they might appear to be unapproachable or rude. And that might not be the case. It might be that they're just not really sure how to um, have those chats or how to um, do that without offending anyone or um, taking too much time out of their work. One of the things that um, a lot of folks that I work with who are really good at chit chat, um, they will often uh, continue on for extended periods of time. And so you'll have to actually tell them that no, I, I can't talk right now. I, I'm doing my work or I have things that I have to do, um, but I can catch up with you later. So it's important to know how to initiate small talk, but also how to get out of it when you need to. So you probably know the terms introvert and extrovert. And this is a, a illustration of what it, kind of the differences are. And there definitely is a difference between introverts and extroverts. And Historically, extroverts are just better at interacting with folks. They really get um, a charge and more exhilaration from from interacting with people. Whereas introverts, when they are uh, asked to converse or engage with others, it's also almost draining and they will need time to reboot. Now, you can be both. So you can be an introvert in some situations and an extrovert in others. So maybe you're an extrovert at home where you get at home and you're able to engage with your family and discuss everything. Or, or you are an introvert at work where you prefer to just get your work done and save that, that chit chat and extrovertism um, until you get home or vice versa. So um, it's important to kind of think about where you fall on this. And like autism is a spectrum, so is introvert versus extrovert. And for myself, I would put myself kind of in the middle. And there are definitely days, depending on my caffeine level and, and the amount of sleep and who's around me, I will be more extroverted than introverted. Introverts also need more time to think before speaking. So if you're an introvert, you need to kind of think about what you're going to say in your small talk conversation before you actually engage in one, or else you might find yourself a little uh, nervous or anxious. So what is small talk? 
okay so like i said before it's it's sort of that chit chat that is a casual conversation these are things that um, you might do while passing someone in the hall meeting in the uh, break room for lunch or um, on your way to warm up food in the break room sometimes if you go into the break room and someone says oh hello hi how are you doing and you kind of just smile but don't engage otherwise you will come off as rude so it's important to make sure that you are making an effort to say something even if it's oh, i'm doing great thanks and then you walk away um but it's important to make sure that you are are making an effort to if even you're not, you're not if you're not going to engage in a lengthy small talk conversation that you're actually acknowledging people So this is a, a cute little cartoon. Sometimes I forget how to do small talk. And that's per perfectly fine. We don't often um, practice small talk. So a lot of times we're used to conversing for work or for um, with our families or loved ones. And so when you're getting around people who might be acquaintances or friends of friends, it might be a little bit more challenging to um, interject some sort of comment that will spark a two to three minute exchange. You know, it's interesting. We t teach children not to talk to strangers, but adults are expected to <laughs> say at least a few words to people um, in, in certain situations and exchange. Even if you're at a grocery store and you sort of make eye contact with someone and you smile, that's an, that's an appropriate exchange. Think about, um, hairdressers or waitresses or um, people who call who are asking for um, your vote or whatever. They often engage in small talk. Someone called uh, just the other day from VCU Alumni Fund and this young undergraduate had, a, he was great at trying to engage me in small talk. Mind you, it was late in the evening and I did not want to engage in small talk, but he, he knew how to do that. And it was seemed very natural for him, just like it is for bartenders or hairdressers um, and dentists for some reason. And hygienists, they seem to speak very well in these small talk conversations. And luckily, you are fine not to talk when you have their hands in your mouth. So that's a good time to do them, not talk. Um, um, so, so people who are acquaintances or office employees might not be great friends, but they might work in the same department of you, as you or might have similar interests as you. And so it's important to explore what some of those things might be. And so what, why do we even bother with small talk? You know, if you, you're sitting here thinking, you know, I really just don't care. I, I think it's a waste of time. I don't really care how people are doing. I don't want to know what someone's reading or what they're watching on TV. Lord knows I don't know what happened on The Bachelor last night, and nor do I want to know. But that's okay. We use, we use small talk for small other things, like to break uncomfortable silence. Um, sometimes it's it's to fill time. So perhaps you're waiting in a conference room before a meeting. If everyone in this conference room was sitting there in silence, it would be a little bit awkward. So that's a nice opportunity to share something about your weekend or ask someone how they're doing or what they're going to do on the weekend. Um, and it's, even if you don't feel like chatting, it's, um, it's a way to build um, some camaraderie and to get folks to realize that you aren't, um, you aren't rude or you're not uh, dismissive. <clears throat> Excuse me. After someone introduces you to someone, let's think about party situations or even in a workplace situations. When you're introduced to another person and you don't know anything about them, you, you should ask them something, right? So what are some things that you could think to ask? You certainly wouldn't want to ask them about politics. You certainly wouldn't want to ask them um, about uh, their family life. But you could say something like, um, how 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 was your weekend or uh, it's great to meet you um what brings you to richmond or charlottesville or whatever um just a way to break the ice and show that you have an interest and this is a kind of a secret but you can fake interest 
and faking interest actually is um, is something that will get you a long way in the work environment. These little chats that you have with people is less about what you discuss and more about what it symbolizes. And so it's about um, building relationships, building connections with people, making yourself known as someone who is not afraid to engage with other people. Even, Even when it's very difficult, you can think of one or two go-to things that you can talk about. Um, um, and even smiling and saying, hi, how are you, is perfectly acceptable. Think about the number of people, and you can kind of take data on this, that you see in a week who, who say, hi, how are you, while they're still walking past you. They don't actually want to stop and listen and find out how you are, that's just a common polite thing to do to say so that it shows interest and um, so being a civil person to one another. Okay, so what to talk about? My goodness, safe topics, we'll start there. The weather, the weather. I'm not sure what we can say besides it rains and it's cold. But beyond that, we could talk about how we really hope spring is right around the corner and how warm weather will be great. And when the sun's out, everyone feels happy. Talk about sports. If you don't know anything about sports, then don't talk about sports. Because sometimes you can get into a conversation where if you don't know much about teams and you start to engage on in a sporting to topic, and the other person knows more than you, then you're gonna feel really ridiculous. I do this all the time because I do like sports. I just don't know all the teams and the players. Some people know players of every team. I don't, but I do like sports. So I could talk about sports on a very generic level. You can talk about weekend plans as long as they're appropriate. Um, you could talk about news topics that are not controversial. So news topics like, um, Oh, I hear they're uh, expanding the pavilion. Or, hey, did you hear that um, there's a, a new movie theater opening up? Very no emotional response is going to happen with those kind of topics. You could talk about an upcoming holiday. I think Mardi Gras starts today. Happy Mardi Gras, if you wish that to anyone. Um, but you could talk about spring break, what you might be doing with your family, or if you're going on a, a trip or something. Arts and entertainment, certainly in Charlottesville, there's plenty of that going on, on and lots of concerts and stuff. Celebrity gossip, I don't often know what to say about this. I do know that Luke Perry died and that's very sad, um, but that might be something that would be something that comes up in like the coffee talk sort of atmosphere. You can talk about your family, certainly, you know, how are the kids, how's your wife, how's your husband? You don't want to dig too deep into other people's uh, family issues because that might be either um, considered uh, being nosy or um, you might end up hearing more than you actually bargained for. And then finally, you can certainly talk about work as long as you keep it positive um, and it's uh, not event session, but more of a, hey, how are you doing on that project? or um, hey, did you hear um, we're coming up with a new uh, a new way to collect data, whatever, something that's um, uh, useful information for both people involved. Stay away from topics, obviously politics. I, I think that's just good news, good ideas for everyone. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about other work colleagues. You certainly wouldn't want other people talking about you. So you wouldn't want to talk about them either. And don't um, comment on a person's weight or appearance. That can get you into trouble. I had um, someone a few years back ask me when I was due and I was not pregnant. And I'm not particularly overweight. It was just uh, apparently my dress was not fitting quite right. And so that was uh, pretty embarrassing for me. And I think for the person once I gave them a very mean look saying that I wasn't pregnant. Religion, um, everyone is entitled to their own beliefs. And so 
you know, you don't really have a small talk about religion. Um, that's more of an in-depth conversation you have with friends. Salary. You don't need to um, share your salary or ask other people's salary. Uh, medical history. If, if there's something going on medically with you, um, you know, those are those are things that you can share with friends and family. That's not something that you would you would do in a, a small talk, brief uh, work conversation. Sex or dating history. Yes, yeah, certainly um, that's taboo for sure. Uh, and then you just really don't want to overshare about anything. So, you know, I I have special interests. I really like soccer. I'm really interested in um, March Madness basketball. Um, I like cooking. I really am interested in getting a new dog. But those are things that I will talk on and on and on about because people get very bored. And then you're going to have to read their nonverbal communication. So it might be eye rolling. They might walk away. They might fold their arms. They might look back to their computer and ignore you. <laughs> and then, then that becomes an uncomfortable situation. So think about those um, topics before you go out and uh, into the hallways and start to engage in uh, small talk. Oops, sorry about that. One more thing about this. When we think about um, social events like a party or a luncheon or something, people mingle. And so think about mingling and almost like speed dating. Uh, so you walk around in a social setting and you talk to a variety of people. You don't really stay in one conversation longer than five to 10 minutes. And so think about think what about you're gonna talk video. about as a very brief um, conversation. A, another place for small talk to occur are elevators or lunch rooms, um, and sometimes restrooms, which I'm not exactly sure why. Um, and the, if you're lining up outside of a restroom, like at a movie theater or a mall or a concert, there's often chit chat that happens there. Um, so think about those one to two exchanges that would be uh, appropriate to talk about in these situations. And they're going to be very different between the line in a concert and your lunchroom. Okay. So this is uh, another little cartoon. And uh, I'll take a minute to read it here. So as you can see in the second square on the top, that's really not a good <laughs> small talk conversation. There's... Uh, very much an opinion, it's lengthy, and the other person was not interested, and so they walked away. So you can see that how small talk could definitely, <laughs> definitely go, go awry. Reading social cues. So most of what we we engage with is is nonverbal. And so this is a, a nice example of that. This gentleman's speaking and everyone is completely bored. One person's asleep, one person's on their phone, one person's doodling. So it's important to take those observations. So take time to look at what other people are doing when you're talking to see how they're acting and how they're interacting with you. If you see any of these signs, you should change the subject or simply say, well, I got to, I've got to go. I'll talk to you soon. If you stay on one topic for too long, you will definitely see these, uh, these situations. I have a lot of uh, folks that I, I meet with frequently and they all have very interesting things that they like to talk about. One gentleman loves to talk about NASCAR. And even though I've said, you know, I really don't know much about NASCAR. He will, engage with me and speak to me about NASCAR until I say, I told you I don't know anything about it and I'm actually not interested in it, so we're gonna have to talk about something else. Which then seems pretty rude on my part, but I'm trying to get him to understand that not everybody is gonna like NASCAR as much as he does. Additionally, I have a, a young man that I'm, um, we text on the phone and he likes to speak about travel. And so recently he sent me 
uh, information about different flights and he wanted to know which I would I would like to travel on to a place I was not even interested in traveling. So while he's very interested in it, I am not. So I do not respond to his text messages. And then I wait till he's not responded or, or not reached out to me for a while. And then I'll text him and say, I know you've been texting me. I don't really want to talk about travel and, and, and flights. Is there something else that we could talk about? So that's my way of um, giving him feedback because we aren't talking face to face. So he doesn't have the opportunity to read my nonverbal, um, my nonverbal cues. So when you're engaging in personal space, or excuse me, in small talk, these are some very important things to consider. So if you are um, talking to a person and your coworker is inching away from you when you talk, you might be invading their personal space. So standing too close or too far from someone can be pretty awkward. So in most interactions um, in America and Western Europe, we try to keep a distance of about three feet or arms distance. And that's a, a pretty safe, familiar way um, to gauge your, your um, distance from someone. If you get too close, you're considered a close talker, and a lot of people will start inching away. So think about personal space. Tone of voice. So don't listen to what your coworkers, or just what the, your coworkers are saying. Listen to how they're saying it. So think about their inflection, their pitch, the articulation, their volume. Um, it's it's really pretty equally important to be a great um, listener so that you can learn to regulate your own voice. So you don't want your listeners to misconstrue your meaning um, based on your tone of voice or your intu intonation. So if you're saying something and you have kind of a mean tone to your voice, they're going to, they're going to in fact think that that is a, a um, that you're actually angry or uh, something is negative in the way you're saying something. So eye contact, eye contact can be pretty difficult for some people. And it's also important not to sustain eye contact. So I remember working with little children with autism, teaching them how to engage in eye contact. And then I realized not everybody engages in eye contact the way that I was teaching it. And it's important to kind of look at someone, check in and like look away. If you were to look and stare at a person throughout a whole conversation, that's also creepy. And so we wanna make sure that um, um, we are allowing ourselves and others to have darting eye contact. Because sometimes these conversations could be anxiety inducing. Um, if you look at someone straight in the eye, that can be mean that you're very confident, but it also can start being um, fairly creepy because if you sustain that eye contact, it might make people uncomfortable. Um, fidgeting, I fidget a lot. <laughs> so um, it, it, the universal sign is discomfort. For me, it's that I don't like to stand still. And so I shift weight from one leg to the other. Um, but if, if someone's fidgeting or um, trying to obviously get out of the situation, it might mean that they're not interested in what you're saying, um, but they, they can, shift from one foot to another and it might be that they're uneasy with the conversation or they just are a little fidgety and that's okay crossed arms well this on the other hand can mean um that they're defensive and so if someone's standing um with their arms crossed looking at you you might have said something that um rub them the wrong way and they might be closed off to that conversation. So it might be an opportunity for you to change the conversation or um, gracefully uh, back out of the conversation and walk away. Probably the most important thing to do is smile. Um, you know, if you go to a grocery store and you walk around, you could see people all throughout the store who look absolutely miserable. Grocery shopping can be a miserable experience, but it doesn't have to be. And so if you take a moment to give eye contact and smile, 
and say, how are you? That smile can brighten someone's day. So, you know, if, if it's a genuine smile, go ahead and do that. Um, you know, it's a scientific fact that smiles involve more facial uh, muscles than frowning. So uh, I think that's a, a pretty good reason <laughs> to smile anyway. Um, even if you don't necessarily, um, aren't necessarily comfortable with it all the time. Your stance. So this is how you stand when you're speaking to someone. Try to uh, identify where you're standing in relationship to the other person. Are you standing next to them and talking kind of out of the side of your mouth? Are you talking in front of them? Which way are your toes pointed? As weird as that sounds, if your toy toes are pointed away, that means that you want to leave the conversation. Similarly, if the other person's toes are pointing away from you, they may want to leave the conversation. If you keep checking your phone, their computer or watch, or the other person does, that means you are not interested at all. So even if you are a person who's constantly on their phone checking it, please be considerate when talking to someone that you put it away or explain why you're checking your phone. The other thing to do is if you're checking your phone to get out of a conversation, oh, geez, I'm, I'm late to a meeting. I got to go. So if you're not comfortable with the, the conversation, you can certainly look at your phone and say, oh, goodness, it's, it's quarter to one. I need to leave. I have a one o'clock meeting I have to prepare for. So those are things that will also get you out of a conversation if you're not, um, not terribly comfortable with it. So some of us, me included, have poor posture because we're lumped over our computers all the time. <laughs> um, so droopy shoulders can mean either that, they're <laughs> we are hardworking yeah. over our computer people, or we're really tired. So if you see a person slouching or looking like they're pretty um, exhausted, tired, that might not be a good opportunity for you to engage in small talk. However, you can definitely smile at them and and just mention, hey, hope you have a great day. Chiming in, this is something that you do in a conversation um, to make sure your coworkers are engaged as you are. Um, so if you find yourself monologuing, like kind of talking on and on and on, like the person that I was talking to about, about NASCAR, um, and you might notice this because someone might either not respond to you at all or give one word responses. So they might um, they might be doing this to get out of the conversation. So you might want to do like a check in with them to say, hey, I'm sorry, I've taken up so much of your time. What did you want to talk about um, so that you can certainly change the conversation to them? The other thing is if two other people are talking and there's something that you feel like you have to add to the conversation, you can move to the conversation if appropriate, if it's not a private conversation. So if it's in public or, you know, in the, in the, in the lunch area or what have you, pause, wait for a moment to, to have a, a lull in the conversation, nod, and then chime in and chiming in will help you enter the conversation as well. So all of this is about why you would do home, why you would do um, small talk. And part of the, the give and take of this is, is working on your own listening skills. So I, I have two kids, they're both teenagers, and I find myself tuning out. And so my kids will engage in small talk with me, usually about some TV show that they're interested in or something that happened at school. Um, and I try to stay engaged, but sometimes I feel like my listening skills are not um, as tuned in as, as they should be. And so it gives me a chance to stop and be present in the, in the moment because it's not gonna last, it's not gonna be forever. Um, and so if I can think about what they're saying and then recast back to them, oh, I hear that you're, um, you're having a, a a debate next week after school. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear how it goes. Or, oh, you like Supernatural? That's really good. Oh, new, new season's coming out. Great. Bet you're looking forward to that. 
Um, so really engaging and trying to pick out something that the other person is saying so that you are showing that you are listening and are interested. So get and stay informed. This is a, goes back to all those topics that we talked about. So we might not really be interested in, in the um, entertainment industry or movies or whatever, but you can certainly in three to five minutes figure out what new movie came out or um, what band is in town that you can be informed about and bring up in a conversation. Practice, 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 practice. This is really hard. We don't, we don't like to do this. It is, seems like a waste of time sometimes, but the benefit is, and the impact is huge. Showing that you are interested in someone else goes a long way. So even if I go to my boss's office after this meeting and ask how their weekend was, I may be in there for three to five minutes, but that, but that shows that I have interest and I care about a person, which in turn will make our working relationship better. Sometimes I'm not always going to get it right. Sometimes I might say something inappropriate. Sometimes I might ask something where I get a uh, response that's way longer than I wanted. But the important thing to do is just do it and just make the time and put forth the effort to do so. So I wanted to leave some time for you all to ask any questions that you may have whether it's about autism, conversation, workplace supports, um, anything that would that would be helpful for you to to know. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, if you all do have questions, uh, please uh, type them into the chat box, and uh, uh, Stacy will be happy to answer them for you. Should I stop share? Yeah, you don't need to continue sharing unless, unless there's something you do want to share. Nope. There you go. Okay. Well, while we're waiting for questions, um, I will go ahead and remind everyone once again that our next uh, webinar talk will be uh, one week from today on uh, Tuesday, March uh, 12th, and it will be, um, let me bring it up here real quick, supposed to be prepared, of course. Um, well, Okay, uh, it'll be Introduction to Shannon and Red X Problem Solving with Serge Jalot, uh, who is the senior engineer for Shannon, uh, the Red X company. Uh, we do still have space available for that event, uh, so if you would uh, like to uh, register for it, uh, you still have the opportunity to do so. Uh, Stacey, it looks like you do have at least one question. I see. So the question is, what do you do when someone who is very chatty that loves to take up your time and they are organizationally higher ranked than you? Hmm. This happens to me often. So I go ahead and put a time limit on myself that I feel comfortable engaging in conversation with this person. Um, part of it is to a balance between engaging that person, but also um, alerting them to that you need to get back to work. So, so if they're organizationally higher and you're chatting with them for a half hour to an hour, that doesn't look so good. So making the, you know, five, 10 minutes uh, of small talk and then, oh goodness, look at the time. I got to go finish this report or I've got a few emails to send before I leave for today or um, I have a phone call at whatever time. So putting a limit before you get into that conversation is what I would do.
do you think the role of small talk is the same when it's peer versus peer versus you and your boss or management? Hmm. Well, well, peer versus peer is a little bit easier sometimes. Um, um, but if you are engaging in the small talk at work, I would recommend that you uh, limit the amount of time that you spend doing this so that nobody uh, has anything to say about you, that you're always chit-chatting with other people. There have been people that I've worked with um, who would go office to office to office, just chit-chatting. And then they would complain later in the day or at the end of the week that they didn't get anything done. Well, their bosses became frustrated because they realized that they spent all this time chit-chatting with everybody. So limit the amount that you do it. It's kind of a, a balance. But if it's a peer, you might want to say, hey, you know, I've only got a couple minutes now, but if you want to chat after work or um, something like that, that might be a better idea. The next question is, do we have to worry about the selection TV shows, TV shows to show a kid with autism? Uh, well, I think that's kind of a, a question about TV shows in general for all uh, youth. So if you are comfortable with what the content is and it doesn't embarrass you and you feel like you can explain it to your child and your child can understand it, then go for it. However, shows that uh, portray violence or that have um, sexual innuendo can be very um, difficult for folks on the spectrum to understand um, without very explicit instruction and um, explanation as to what's going on. I hope that helps. Um, how do you get the feedback on whether you're chatting people up too much or not social socializing enough? Well, if you're not socializing enough, um, people might tell you. Um, if you're chatting too much, um, people might tell you that as well. But why don't you consider taking your own data? So I might say on a given day, I will engage in two small talk conversations up to 10 minutes each. And so if I meet that, then I'm, I feel like that's pretty adequate. If I don't meet that, or if I go days without talk to, talking to anyone, then that's probably not enough. So kind of keep your own um, barometer about how often you are talking to people. And certainly there are people that you're gonna to wanna to talk to more than other people, and that's absolutely okay. Um, what do you do to stop someone who always monologues instead of converses with people? <laughs> so I am pretty um, blunt, and sometimes people who monologue need to be blunt, um, need to have someone be blunt to them. So I will say, I would love to talk to you about this, but you aren't letting me talk. Or can you give me a chance? Or can we talk about something that we both can talk about? Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. If you, um, there are times when I've actually said, please stop. You have talked to me about this topic for 10 minutes and I have not been able to say anything. This is not a conversation. This is you talking at me and I'd rather talk with you. Um, so being very direct and blunt is the best way. Are dad jokes in the office appropriate? Oh boy, <laughs> there's a gentleman in my office who has kids in elementary school that likes to share their jokes with us. Some of them are actually pretty funny. Well, um, if they don't take up too much time and if they are appropriate, then sure. Um, if this is something that's an ongoing thing, then you know it, it could be kind of annoying. Um, what is the sense from other people? Are they um, are they liking them? Do they think they're stupid? Um, do people prefer not to um, say these things or hear these things? You know, we have um, a person who likes to list stuff, and so we have a chalkboard in our yes, a chalkboard in our um, kitchen that will have like your top ten favorite Easter candies. 
And so that's a place for that person could, that can start their topic and people can write there. Um, it might be something where he puts the joke of the day uh, on a whiteboard somewhere. How do we transition from being an introvert to an extrovert? Uh, practice and know that if you're intro an introvert and you are trying to be an extrovert, you are going to get extremely tired because it's going to be challenging. It's going to zap all of your energy. So start small. Um, you know, think about where you are most comfortable and uh, who you're most comfortable with and start going out with people. Um, I have a friend who is on the autism spectrum and he um, very rarely, he works from home, doesn't really leave his house, doesn't talk to anybody. Um, I have friends who try to engage him, um, but he's really not interested. Um, but at this point, he doesn't want to change. But if you do want to change, think about those one to two people who you're most comfortable with and figure out what are some things that you might want to do with them, whether it's go grab a, a coffee or an adult beverage, go see a movie, um, meet up for, for dinner um, and do that. Start to challenge yourself doing it, you know, once a month to start. Then maybe you're doing that plus your um, grocery shopping on your own or um, you go to a meetup group of something that you're interested in. Um, some of those things can help you slowly transition, but be kind to yourself and know that you're going to get tired and it's going to be challenging um, and don't give up. OK, how can you limit small talk that you are not even engaged in? People need to get their work done instead of conversing on work-related topics. Oh, yes. So um, that happens a lot. And if I hear it happening outside of my office, I close my office door. Um, um, if that doesn't work, or if I need to leave my office door open, or I'm in a location where it's open in the, in the open area, I put on headphones because I'm disengaging. So people do need to get their work done, but people also have to monitor their own behavior. And um, unless you are the boss of them or their supervisor, um, they don't, I mean, you really have much you can do in that situation. I work in an environment with retired military, and it appears many of them are not aware of what it is, what is appropriate small talk within a corporate environment. What is the best way to inform or educate them of the topics. Their chats are inappropriate, but still maintain a cordial relationship. <laughs> um, I can see where this could be a challenge. Um, you know, this might be something that you post on the HR website, or um, if you want like a flyer about, um, appropriate talk in the office or um, topic cards or um, uh, any way to get that message out without pinpointing directly at them would be very, um, very ap appropriate. Um, if there is someone in HR who would be more comfortable talking about this, that might be uh, a good idea too. Um, in I'm wondering if there's if there if this topics if these topics are about um, more poli politics. If so, it could be that your office is a, a po politics free zone. Um, I would certainly like to enforce that in most areas of, that I <laughs> engage. Um, so I, so I, I would I would think about creative ways to send out reminders. Um, you know, in today's political climate, make sure that we're uh, being uh, cognizant of everybody's um, differences in beliefs and um, stances. So refrain from your political conversations until after work hours, maybe something along those lines. Um, or you could say in other news, you know, um, the princess had a baby or or. Um, VCU has won their last 10 basketball games, whatever. Um, 
but to give them the parameters around what they're able to talk about. I also want to throw out that my email address is secarr at vcu.edu. And if there, and I'll type it in the chat box as well, if there is anything that you think about that you want to discuss later, feel free to email me. I'm great at email. Um, it also gives me a little bit of time to formulate a little bit more thoughtful response. Um, and if you want to give a do a back and forth about um, small talk, we can certainly do that as well. Or I can share any other resources with you. With you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Stacy. Uh, it looks like we don't have any other questions. Uh, one other thing, too, before I forget. Um, if you do have somebody in mind uh, for a presenter for us uh, for a webinar either in April or May, uh, do uh, please send me an email. I'll put my email address again into the chat box so if I can see it. Uh, I did have it there at the beginning, but I'll share it one more time there. Um, yeah, we do have two more that are scheduled this month, uh, which will wind down the month of March, but uh, April and May at this point are still both wide open. So uh, we would like to uh, be able to offer somebody uh, something in, in each of those two months. So um, if, you, if you're interested or if you know of someone who is, uh, feel free to please let me know. So uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up for this time. Uh, Looks like there's no more questions, uh, which is fine. Um, okay, thanks, James. Appreciate that. Uh, I'll reach out to you offline uh, for contact information. Um, anyway, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Stacy uh, once again for presenting for us today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we do too. Uh, and also like to thank all of you for joining us uh, once again today, and uh, we look forward to seeing uh, many of you uh, next Tuesday, uh, same place, same time. So uh, we hope uh, you have a great rest of the day, great rest of the week, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye now.